If you saw this, would you know what it meant? It's an RSS feed. If you knew that, then you're probably already taking advantage of what RSS feeds can do for your business and for your website. For those of you still wondering what this all means, sit tight because you're about to learn how to create your own RSS feed and how it will help you become a better marketer. We'll keep it as basic as possible and try to avoid technical jargon. First of all, what is an RSS feed and how does it work? It's a way to syndicate and distribute information about your business and products, and it brings traffic and attention to your website. Think of it as a subscription. Your readers get an alert every time you distribute a feed. So how do you start creating a feed? If you understand HTML, you'll probably understand enough to cut and paste from another RSS file and replace it with your own information. If you don't understand HTML, follow these steps. First, open up Notepad or Word. Here you'll type out three bits of information. Title, description and a link. This is considered a new item and should be labelled as such for your feed. You'll do this by surrounding your three lines of information with XML tags, which are similar to HTML. Pay close attention, because if you follow this step correctly, anything that reads RSS will understand the information that you send out. On your first line containing the title, you'll need to start with the title tag and close it with the slash title tag. It should look like this. For your description, do the same, starting out with the opening description tag, and closing it with the slash description tag, like this. Next, for the link tag, we repeat the process, adding the link at the beginning and the slash link at the end. And it should look like this. To actually define this as an item, you'll need to add the open item tag at the top and this tag at the bottom, slash item. Putting it all together, your new item should look like this. Congratulations. You're halfway finished with your first RSS file. Now that you've defined the item, all you've got left to define is the channel, also known as your website. Go to the top of the page, inserting three lines above your item. You use the same tags as with the items, title, description and link. This time, use information about the website as a whole. Don't enclose the three lines of information with the item tags. It should look like this. Almost done. Now for the finishing tags. First at the very top of the file, type question mark XML version equals a single quotation mark 1.0 a single quotation mark and a question mark. On the next line type RSS version equals single quotation mark 2.0 single quotation mark. Hit enter once again and on the next line type channel. The three lines on the top before your channel info should look like this. And last but not least, Go into the very bottom of the page, type out the following tags, slash channel on one line and slash RSS on the next line down. What we've just done is define the XML and RSS versions. So far, even though we've entered the bare minimum information, everything we've done is compatible with popular RSS versions and are widely used. Your entire RSS feed should now look like this, which is what we showed you in the beginning. Doesn't seem all that daunting now, does it? There's a lot more you can do with your feeds. This is just the bare basics. Now that we've finished creating the feed, we have to save and implement the file. You can save it with whatever name you want to give it, using the .xml extension. So, for example, we'll save ours as understanding underscore feeds dot xml. Now you're able to place the file anywhere on your web server. Let's say you put in the root or home directory. For us, the address would look like this. You're done, but who's going to see it? The people who have subscribed to your feed will get the alert, but you should also explore submitting feeds to RSS directories and search engines. For more information on how to build your own RSS feeds, visit this link.